So everybody, we are about one week away from Apple announcing their brand new iPhone 16 lineup of phones. I'm extremely excited. So in this video, we're gonna talk about 16 changes from the 15 to the 16 lineup and exactly what to expect from it. Let's get into it. So the first big change coming is going to be to the pro lineup of iPhone 16s, and we're gonna actually get bigger screen sizes going from 6.1 to 6.3 on the 16 Pro, and then 6.7 to 6.9 on the 16 Pro Max. The second change coming, believe it or not, is going to be that the bezels are actually gonna get even thinner. I already thought with the 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max that the bezels were thin enough, but now we're actually getting even thinner, basically reducing the bezel size about 30 to 35%, going from 1.7 millimeters to 1.2 on the Pro models, and 1.55 millimeters to 1.15 on the Pro Max model. So these things are gonna be basically edge to edge. The next change is going to be an even brighter display. So now we're getting an MLA OLED display, so it's gonna give us a bit more of a vibrant color. So definitely expect to get those kind of peak brightness levels to even higher than the 2000 inch brightness that we already have on the 15 Pro and Pro Max. The fourth change is going to be to new colors on the iPhone. I think Apple's gonna be dropping that bluish color hue and foregoing it for this new kind of like copper brownish looking color, which people either love it or they hate it. I'm sure Apple's going to give us a nice new look or maybe even a two-tone look, which I've kind of seen kind of floating around as well, but definitely expect at least one new color and maybe two, depending on what Apple gives us on the pro level models. And then on the regular models, we will be getting much more vibrant and saturated colors. We're gonna still have five different colors, but instead of them being these kind of pastel-y, light, almost non-existent, they're gonna be much more saturated and poppy, so you'll be able to actually tell what color you're getting. The next change is going to be to the camera setup on both of these phones. So first off, on the 16 and 16 Plus, there will be a vertical alignment on the new camera sensors, as opposed to the diagonal alignment, and that's gonna be for spatial video. And then on the Pro Max models, we are actually now getting a new 48 megapixel ultra-wide compared to the 12 megapixel ultra -wide. Wide. And then to continue on with more camera changes, on the 16 Pro specifically, it will be getting that 5x optical zoom, so the camera systems on the Pro and Pro Max should be identical, which is something that we could not say about the 15 Pro and Pro Max. The 15 Pro only had a 3x optical zoom, and then the 15 Pro Max had that 5x optical zoom. So now we should be getting the same ones on both the 16 Pro and the 16 Pro Max. Although I wouldn't be surprised if Apple gives maybe a 10x zoom on the Pro Max, but let's see. The new 16 Pro and Pro Max models should also be getting up to 3K video files in that 120 FPS slow-mo. So if you guys do use the slow-mo footage that Apple gives us at 120 or 240 FPS, if you go to 120, you can only do it in HD. And if you even wanna go with a higher frame rate at 240 FPS, it'll bring it down to 720p. So now we should be getting 3K recording with 120 FPS, meaning we should get maybe 1080p on the 240 FPS. And again, there seems to be a lot of emphasis on the camera module and how people use their cameras because these iPhone cameras, as you see here, this is my A-roll shot and I am using an iPhone 15 Pro Max. So Apple's tripling, quadrupling down on an iPhone being almost like a camera first and then a phone second. And to go with that, Apple's actually including a brand new capture button on the entire lineup of iPhones. It should be placed on the right-hand side lower than the lock button, kind of on the bottom half of it, or maybe even the bottom third. And I've already been getting cases in the studio with this capture button kind of having a cutout already, and it is showing it on that bottom third of the iPhone. So it'll be interesting to see exactly what Apple does with this button. It should be just a capture button for the camera, but I'm sure you'll be able to customize it as you see fit alongside iOS 18. And now if we go into the internals, we should be getting the new A18 Pro chip in the Pro model of iPhones, and it's still gonna follow that three nanometer process. And ideally, this will just make the iPhone a little bit more efficient from a battery perspective, a little bit better from a thermal perspective as well, and all in all, just kind of a little bit tighter. Because now we're a few generations into that three nanometer process, so Apple is just getting ultra efficient with it. And then the 16 Pro model should also go from Wi-Fi 6E to now Wi-Fi 7 support, if you do have a router that supports that to give you even faster Wi-Fi connectivity. Now, because these iPhones are getting just that much bigger, it shouldn't be a huge change from a form factor and footprint standpoint, but it is going to be a little bit bigger in the hand, but that does leave room for much bigger batteries, not only because there is more room but then also because Apple's using a new double layered battery technology supposedly and that's what we're hearing in the rumor mill so we should be getting a much larger battery on both the 16 Pro and the 16 Pro Max giving us hopefully maybe even two days of full use because because I'm still missing the days of that 13 Pro Max where that battery life was so efficient and so amazing that I would easily get two days of battery usage out of that phone and now with the 15 Pro Max the battery is okay but again I'm running all the beta programs on it and I definitely put it through its paces so the battery life at this point is not doing that well. And then in that same light with the battery charging, the new Pro model should be able to support up to 40 watts of fast charging and possibly even faster MagSafe charging at 27 watts of that wireless charging. 
that remains yet to be seen. I'm excited to see what Apple does from a battery perspective because Apple and iPhones have never been known to be super fast charging or have any kind of crazy charging technology or even battery tech. So being able to kind of give us a little extra oomph when it comes to charging these phones up, especially very quickly, would be a great thing to have with the new iPhone 16 lineup. And I do want to briefly mention the Apple intelligence situation because the iPhone 15 and 15 plus will not have access to it. Again, this is going to be coming out with 18.1 and 18.1 does not come out probably until late October, so don't expect your brand new iPhone to have Apple Intelligence ready to go because it will not, so definitely take that into consideration. But if you do pick up a new iPhone 16, 16 Plus, 16 Pro, or 16 Pro Max, you will be getting Apple Intelligence once 18.1 releases in late October. So those will be some great features once it does come to the entire public, and definitely stay subscribed because we have been already using Apple Intelligence and have been learning about it as we've been using the 18.1 beta, and overall I am pleasantly pleased with how good Siri is gotten. So that should be all the changes in terms of what to expect with the new iPhone 16 lineup of phones. I'm personally excited to see exactly how Apple markets it in terms of comparing it to last year's model because again, if you have a 15 model or even a 14 or at this point even a 13, if you don't absolutely need something like USB-C, I would still forego maybe upgrading unless maybe you have a cracked screen or if it's already really slow because these iPhones are getting so good and even from a longevity standpoint, it doesn't make full sense to upgrade on a year by year basis. Now, depending on your situation and what you use these iPhones for, maybe you do have the ability to upgrade on a year to year basis and kind of get those five to 10% incremental upgrades. I'm for one excited for the new colorway, the new capture button, as well as the new camera system on the 16 Pro Max specifically. And then for me, the larger screen size is always a good thing. But again, now we're getting closer to that phablet territory. If you guys remember back in the day when people thought that was almost too much, I believe an iPad mini is 7.9 inches and now, and now an iPhone 16 Pro Max will only be an inch smaller. So let's see if that maybe even cannibalizes the need for an iPad mini. So let's see what Apple does exactly at this Glow Time event. I for one am excited to see exactly how Apple puts this out. So let me know with a comment down below which iPhone you have, are you upgrading, and why you are upgrading if it's something that you're excited about. But that'll do it, everybody. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you want to watch more videos like this one, click on one of these videos right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everybody.